Unexpectedly, and uh, we want our prayers to go with him. And he did get home safe and sound. He called James, told him he was there, <laughs> and uh, they sent his uh, assistant uh, associate pastor down here to help him drive back. So they got back in, in pretty short order. But he promised he'd be back. <laughs> I have a uh, thank you letter. Uh, first of all, I, I don't think we ever told everybody this that I remember. Uh, and this was kind of Snuffy's uh, idea. He came up with it, uh, and I agreed with it. And the uh, missionary board also agreed with it. Uh, we started giving a $150 donation to each one of our volunteer fire departments every month. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think. I know I'm a little prejudiced in that area, but I think they well, they well deserve that. And uh, so uh, we started doing that in January. We got a thank you note from the Colorado City Volunteer Fire Department said, We would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your support. All day donations go to help our 
fund our department for equipment, gear, maintenance, supplies, and training for our uh, firefighters. Colorado City Fire Department is proud to serve Mitchell County and you, your continued support helps keep us going so that we may better serve you as part of this community. And that's from the <coughs> Fire Chief of Colorado City. Thank you Yes, sir. I think it's important to add to that that every penny, every donation, every penny that comes in from donations to all of these fire departments all goes right back into the community. Yeah. Right back yeah. into it. Yeah. That's one thing we specified whenever we started doing it, decided to do this, that we go directly to each fire department, not to the cities that they operate in. Right. They have control over that money themselves. Yes. So. That's a good thing. Amen. Um, I know we usually don't do prayer ministry and things on Sunday, but we got a couple of people that are having some problems. David Bell is really having some problems with his feet. Uh, he's back in the hospital, I believe, right now. Uh, they're threatening to do some pretty serious surgery on him, so we need to keep David in our, in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, also, uh, Janet and Ricky Andrews have been down. Uh, they made one day of the, or two days of the uh, revival and they were sick. And I know Ricky's been felt real bad and uh, Janet was able to work, but she was not feeling well. And uh, we need to keep them in our minds. Uh, <laughs> I guess, I mean, if anybody had not noticed, we have a new thing. Yeah. Uh, that man, uh, I won't think. Uh, What's your name? Jones? I want to thank him for helping me go get it. He took the day off and, and went with me to go pick it up. We bought it from Arrow Ford in Abilene. Uh, it's a real nice van. It's parked out here. It's unlocked. Doors are unlocked on it. You can look at it when you leave this evening after the services today. <laughs> you can uh, go out there and look at it if you want to or whatever. Uh, real nice addition to our yes. broken yes. stock up here in Texas. One yes. exactly just like it. Same color, I mean, to a T. Just like it in Lowland. And I know because I thought it was you yesterday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, um, I don't mean to take up James's time. But I've got a little story about this that everybody needs to know. We started trying to do this a year and a half ago, and we had nothing but trouble. Yes, we. Uh, I was asked to let everybody that was not in Sunday school know that we are doing a money tree for Summer's new baby. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just give the money to Donnie and she's going to make the tree. Okay. Anything, any amount you want to donate. What's it for? For Summer and them's new baby. For the new baby. Baby Cooper. 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 Baby I beat my head against the wall and the floor and everything else trying to get it done. I almost given up. About two months ago, I contacted a salesperson at Arrow Ford. Her name is Mary Jane Jones. And she has uh, come to find out she worked in the Peace Corps for about 20 years. And she was a Christian person. She, you know, working for that organization, you, most of those people are. She finally found this man. She finally ended up with two of them and got me hooked up with going to look at them and trying to get everything straightened out. We decided we wanted the man we got. She, of course, you go through a maze trying to get everything done at a big dealership. They put me with a young man by the name of Damien Sanchez. He's a finance officer there. Come to find out, Damien had served 20 years in the military in the Marines, Air Force, and the Army. 
he had, he had a rather long career. And then Wayne and I got to talking to him about being retired law enforcement. Turns out he was a uh, officer for, after he got out of the military, he was an officer for law at Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department for 10 years. So, you know, we had a lot in common. And whenever I went in the office to do this, he was got a book laid out on his desk. He said, oh, let me do this. He said, I'm studying for a uh, master's degree in uh, Bible worship, or what he called it a certain course. Turns out this guy's been in church since the time he was able to walk. I think it was a God thing. I really do. And, uh, it, was, it all fell together right, and you know, I want to really keep these people in our prayers. They, they helped us a bunch, and uh, I was really grateful to them. So that's the story. <laughs> In the what? Jamboree Wednesday. What? Jamboree on oh, Wednesday. Did you say oh, did you say we're having him? He told me we were. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have Jamboree on Wednesday. It's scheduled six o'clock. That's right. Six o'clock. Now, nobody remembers whether we did birthdays and anniversaries this month or not. Did we? Do y'all remember? No. Well, then we're going to do it this morning. We're we'll doing it again. If we did it, then. Just blame it on us old people that forgot. We're going to do it again anyway. You speak for yourself. I do speak for myself. <laughs> Everybody that had a birthday this month, stand up. Uh, Tina. Tina. You have a birthday this month. <laughs> okay. Okay. Happy birthday. Stand up. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. There he is. He got to come stand next to his bride. Didn't we have another one too? I thought so. Oh, Jay and Kimberly. There she's. Yeah, she's there she is. How long, Herman? Fifty-three years. What? Oh, How long you? Twenty years. Twenty years. South Korea, but he's going to be there for 24 hours, so he doesn't know when he's going to get home. Yeah, that could be. We got him down. Show Lord prayer. Lord, we come to you today with a with an open and happy heart. We have had a good week here. We had, uh, even though it was cut short, we had a great revival. Well, we want to thank you for bringing Brother Mark to us. We also want to thank you for getting him home safe and fight sound. And we ask that you help him in his, his uh, situation there and, and do what you can for him. Lord, uh, he's a good man and, and a good Christian. and We wish the best to him. We want to see him back here again and, and doing what he does best. Lord, we uh, thank you so much for the privileges and kind things you've done for us. Uh, Lord, as I mentioned before, we uh, ended up 
with a, a new piece of transportation. And I feel sure that you have a hand in that, getting us that and uh, uh, helping us with the, the people that you did. And I ask that you take care of those people that helped us and be with them and guide them and uh, continue them on in their professions and, and make a successful life for them. Lord, we uh, thank you so much for everything you've done for us lately. Lord, we ask that you continue to do that. As always, I ask that you be with our military personnel, our emergency services workers, and our uh, medical professionals. They make this country what it is, and your guidance to them and your help to them is always important and well received, and we are very thankful for that. Lord, be with Brother James's message today. Be with us through the rest of this day when we come back again. Please forgive us for our sins and shortcomings, which are many. I ask all of these things in your holy name. Amen. 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 Fifteen What? <laughs> this, this is no, 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 because it's, cause it's not, it's not a wall. It says it is. I know, but it ain't. <laughs> Two, four. She says it ain't, it ain't.
Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah.
and his mother going to do the special? Can you control your volume on there? So you
no matter what. Yes. If he can't get you one way, he'll turn around and try to do it some yes. other way. Yes. So uh, we need to really, really continue to pray for him. Yes. All right, uh, just quickly, right after the service, could I see our trustee for just a moment? I got a couple of things I want to run by you. Uh, to be, just to be thinking about, we're not gonna, we normally have our trustee meeting on the first Saturday of every month. And, uh, but this one, we, if we just need to pray about it and then make the final decision then, uh, that'd be great. Uh, that's no problem, but if there's something for you to be praying about, something you'd be thinking about. All right, Luke chapter number 14. And we'll read the man Sunday school class back here. Luke chapter 14. I want to begin reading with verse number 15, please. Luke chapter number 14, verse 15. And when one of them that fed at me with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper, and he did many. And he said his servant at the supper time to say unto them that he had bid it come, for all things are now ready. And they all, when one uh, uh, consent, began to make excuses. The first one said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must need go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. The another one said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go, I go to prove them and pay thee, I have, pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, therefore I cannot go. Probably the only one had a real good excuse, right? <laughs> Just say it. She wouldn't let him go. <laughs> uh, so the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly <clears throat> unto the street and the lane of the city. Bring in the hitter, the poor, the maimed, the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, we have done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto them, the servant, Go into the highway and head, and compel us to come in, that my house may be filled. And I'll say unto you, that none of these men that were busy shall take of my supper. Let's go, Lord, and pray this morning. Our Father, we thank you again for the rich blessings that we already received. Thank you for the good music program. Thank you for that beautiful special this morning, Lord. And we are, we know that you are the Messiah. And God, you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so, Lord, I just ask you this morning that you take these next few moments and God, that you use us in a great mighty way. Lord, I realize that in myself this morning, God, I am nothing. But Lord, you can take me and you can mold me and you can make me a vessel fit for your use. But Lord, I ask you to speak through me this morning. May every word that I say today will be straight from you. And God, I pray that you'll open the hearts of the people that are here. And God, they'll hear just exactly what they need to hear from you. But Lord, I ask you to bless the reading of your word, bless your message, and your messenger. Because it's in Jesus' name we ask you. Amen. Amen. The story is a very familiar story that all of us at one time or another, uh, if you study your Bible very much, have probably read it. And it all deals with everything, you know, every time, now maybe I need to tell you this, uh, every parable that Jesus used in the Word of God was a parable of instruction for you and I. He was trying to get something across to me and you, and he did it in these parables when he wrote the parables in the New Testament. 
This parable here concerned a man that made a great trouble. Did you realize one of these days, you and I that are born again in the family of God that are saved are going to sit down with yeah. Jesus, sit yeah. down with God, and we're going to have one of the greatest suffering in the world. We're going to have a hamburger and french fries. I know that. I know that's what we're going to have. Amen. Amen. But he made this great supper, and so he went out and he invited certain people. Notice he had three that he invited. Do you understand that coming to the Lord must be an invitation? God has to invite you in in order for you to receive what he wants you to receive. So these three men and eight, they began to uh, ask if they could be dead. The first one said, you know, I, I bought this land. And I've got to go prove it. i got to go see it. I don't know if y'all know very much about land, but I don't think I would have bought a piece of property without even knowing what I bought. Same way with the man with the ox. He bought his oxen. He had never seen them. And he said, I've got to go prove them. So he said, please, excuse me. And then we come to the service. And I'm not going to spend much time on that one, but he just said he had a wife. And so he didn't come. He didn't say why, other than the fact that he got married. Maybe they were going on their honeymoon. And he didn't, didn't have time to come. Who knows? The Bible doesn't go into detail about it. They just said he married a wife, so therefore he wanted to be excused. All the way through this, we find that they kept asking the master, can you excuse me? Can you excuse me? This morning, if I may, for the next few moments, I want to talk to you about Making excuses in our life. Every one of us at one time or another, if we were honest, have made some kind of excuse for something that we needed to do. The biggest thing that we encounter is, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. You know? We start out to do something or need something done, and if we don't get it done at all, it's no big deal. We'll do it tomorrow. Well, what if tomorrow don't ever come? So you're not promised another day, another hour, or another minute. Amen. The Bible says, man is born a woman in a few days and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower, and then he's cut down. Yeah. And the Bible also tells us that it's pointing out a man wants to die. So every one of us is going to make that appointment one time or another in our life. Amen. Yeah. And when you stand before God and you begin to make excuses for why you didn't serve Him, why you wasn't faithful to Him, why you didn't accept Him as your Lord and Savior, He's going to hear, you're going to hear the saddest word that ever been written in the Word of God. The part you made you to work with me, why I never knew. Amen. Yeah. So what are the excuses that we use sometimes? You know, one of the biggest ones that I run across as I was studying it is the excuses that we make for not going to church. One of them is, it says this. Oh, preacher, your church is just too far away for us to come. Some of you live three blocks from here. We got a we got a lady to drive from Tahoma to attend our church. We got folks driving from Snyder, from Hermale that come to our church. Now they are not going to let distance stand between them and serving God. No excuse, folks. All but the weather. You know, pray Jerry, it's just so windy out there. If I go, it's sure going to mess up my hands. 
And I don't want people to look at me, my hair all messed up. I, I just got to stay in. I can't come. Oh, preacher, it's just too cold to get out of the house and go all the way down there and go into that church. Our church stays 70 degrees year round. If you're too cold, if you'll make that effort, you can be comfortable when you're sitting in here. Anybody here not be comfortable in here? Weather sometimes causes us. Now, we have had times in the past that we have shut church down because of the weather. If it gets to that point, you God understand? For the safety of you and I, to, we don't have to be on a highway or walk these sidewalks down here that's covered with ice. If it gets that bad, then we need to worry about it. Amen. Not, there's, there's exceptions to everything. I know, uh, talking about those exceptions, when I went to law enforcement school, they were teaching us uh, the penal code. <coughs> And in the penal code, if you've ever, we got a lot of, a lot of guys in here that's been law enforcement that have done. It says it is against the law. And then it gave you 47 exceptions to that rule. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes there is an exception for you to not be able to be here when the weather is bad. Some folks are not stable on their, on their feet. Some are having a problem uh, walking. Some have problems driving. And God understands that. But when it's 90 degrees outside or 840 degrees outside and the roads are dry, then you've got no excuse for not being here. I'm just too busy, preacher. You know, I got a business and I just don't have time to come to church. We had the privilege of going out last night and blessing a new business, a new owner of an old business, but it's a new business for them. Our golf course has changed hands and so and so they had a supper last night for and we loaned it to tables and chairs and we were glad to be able to do that yeah. and they had a supper for all the members and uh, to get acquainted with them for them to get acquainted with us uh, one, of, one of the owners is in our service this morning her and her husband uh, bought the, the golf course and they wanted <laughs> us to come out and bless their business you see, every vision that ever goes in, if it's not in the will of God, and you're not willing to turn it over to God, then that vision will never survive. Never survive. But if you let that vision stand between you and God, God will never bless it, and He'll never bless you. Now I understand it. Sometimes people uh, have to work. I remember when I was young and I pastored our first church, I come out of the old independent fundamental Bible believing Bible cut coating uh, fundamental hat. And they preached. I never did do it, but they preached that every business in town ought to close on Sunday. Nobody ought to work on Sunday. And then they give the closing prayer and say, where are we going to go eat? <laughs> <laughs> they want the business to close itself. The restaurant. They want to be able to go eat. I thank God that some of our uh, businesses in town uh, do close on Sunday. And they give that, that day to the Lord. And it gives that day to their employees to allow them to be able to attend church if they want to. Oh, you know, I got my feelings hurt in church one time, preacher. So you just gonna have to excuse me. I can't go because I, I you know, I just, I, 
somebody hurt my feelings, and I'm just not going to be around them. A preacher, you going to act, excuse me. I know the people that go to your church. I know the way they live on Monday through Saturday. And there's no way I'm going to go up there with that bunch of hypocrites and stay in that service knowing what they're doing. Well, you see, here's the thing. You're either going to spend eternity in hell with a hypocrite or you can come spend one hour on Sunday morning. Amen. Yeah. to you. It's up to you. But I understand it. You know, maybe somebody through the week you know that belongs to our church or belongs to some church in this city. They don't live like they should. They don't let their life shine for God. But that's not your big. Amen. Sorry about that. <laughs> and that's no excuse for you, my God. Amen. Because it's not all about them. It's all about you. Whether you've got the right relationship with God or not. Are you going to serve God? Are you going to be what God wants you to be? Are you going to do that? Amen. What kind of life are they? Oh, I got to, you know, I got to move on. The service is just too long. <laughs> that old long-winded preacher, he just goes on and on and on. That's why they put a big old clock that you know how long. They just want me going on and on and on. I remember the first church that I pastored. I said I was 27 years old, wet behind the ear. Uh, didn't have a chance not to pour the water out of a boot. And the second Sunday I was there, God was good, the Holy Spirit was moving, and I was preaching, and I could see the clock on the back of the wall. I knew it was 12 o'clock, but I wasn't through. <laughs> and I kept preaching. I had a man sitting over here about where John said it. And I noticed he goes, <laughs> sat there for a second and went, <laughs> And then he got up from where he was, walked to the middle of the aisle, looked up at that clock, looked down at his watch, looked back up at that clock, and went back and sat down. I prayed for 30 more minutes. <laughs> and for some reason, we don't know why, but that clock disappeared. <laughs> there, you cannot put a time on the Holy Spirit when it's moving and told to be cut, people are being told to cut, people are being saved. You can't put a time on it. I can remember back in the old days when they they preached for two hours and people just sat there on the wooden bench and listened to it. Speaking of that wooden bench, it did too uncomfortable for me to come preach. That's why we put these pads in these pews so you have something to set on besides what God gave. <laughs> if that's not comfortable enough for you, we'll go get a chair out of time. We'll wheel it in here for you. But don't let the comfort of the church keep you from being what God gives you. Excuses we make for not tending church. Oh, but I don't like oh so and so. Let me give you a sad story. There are churches today in America. Thank God it doesn't happen here. But that line, that walkway that's between here, this side of the pew and that side of the pew. Some churches that is a dividing line. These folks will not fit with these folks over here. And these folks will not associate with those folks over there. God has. You have to come to church. 
with a grudge in your heart exactly. and envy right. against somebody or strife against somebody and you got to sit there and try <coughs> to receive what God had you receive when you got somebody sitting across the aisle that you're upset about. That's right. Get up off your roof and go across the aisle and grab them around the arm and around the neck and tell them you're sorry apologize. Satan is hard at work. Yes, it is. Folks work all week long. And I've had people in this city right here tell me this. It's not something new. Pretty hard work, six days a week. Sunday's the only day I have on. And I've got so much I have to do on my day off. I just don't have time to go to church. They got time to eat lunch. They got time to look at Facebook on their phone. They got time to do this and they got time to do that. They just don't have time to give God one hour. See, God doesn't ask a lot of you. He doesn't ask you to do anything that is that He would not do, or that is too hard for you to do. All He asks is you be willing to give Him just a few minutes. Yeah. Amen. How much time did He give us? When you hung between heaven and hell on that cross for a hell down, hell deserving sinner like me. He had time to look over that crowd and say, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He had time to tell one of the thieves that was standing beside him and being crucified for deeds that he'd done that he deserved to die on that cross. We look at him and say, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Amen. See, even on the cross, Jesus took time to tell somebody that he's he going to heaven and he wanted them to go with him. Amen. Jesus is going to heaven. In the book of Acts, I didn't even get started, but I'm going to quit. In the book of Acts, Bible talked about the Bible talks about the uh, I gotta get on the right side here thank God the 20, 28th of February I get this in a reflection but uh, Jesus took time I wonder how much time Have you played this week? I'm not talking about if I'm a, a Lord, I bless my food out of prayer. That ought to happen. But that's not really praying to God. Praying to God so you get on your place before God and you got a burden on your heart and you got somebody in your life that you know of that's on their road to eternity and hell. Or you need something from God so desperately that you're crying out to God, God help me. I need this situation to take care of. See, God hear that prayer. God has never yet turned a deaf ear to you. A lost person speak to you for just a moment. You can play all you want to. And God's never going to answer your prayer. See, a lost person's prayer, only one will God answer. And that's when you pray and ask Jesus to come into your heart. That's the only prayer. All from that day on, he's going to bless you. Yes, 
Yes. From that day on, he wants to be there for you. From that day on, he'll answer your prayers. He'll follow your needs. He'll take care of you. But you first have to make that decision. Well, let me ask you a question this morning as we close. If you want to die right now, do you know beyond the shadow of death where you spend your eternity? Amen. You can't say, preacher, I know. I can raise my hand, I can testify. One day, I asked Jesus to move my heart and faith. You can't do that. We're going to give you an opportunity at this point to leave this building today with that assurance in your heart and that, that peace that only God can give. Maybe you're here and you're a Christian. God's been asking you to do something. Maybe something in the church. And you made all kinds of excuses for not doing it. All three guys don't have the ability. Three guys don't have the time. Three guys don't have the talent to do it. You know what God said? He said, I've never called anyone that was a quit. I've always equipped those that I call. Yeah, yeah. You can do all things through Christ. Yeah. But you gotta be willing to do it. Have you been making excuses for not being faithful to God? Not attending the house of God like you should? Not being the right kind of mother, the right kind of father, the right kind of mother of a child to your family, the right kind of daughter, son? Or that right kind of person to those that around you. There's people in this church that love you. And they will love you no matter what. Yeah, yeah. All you gotta do is return that love that they share with you. Yeah. You can have that joy. That's about it. You know, we had a he told him to go out and get the blind, the lame, the halt, the desire. You see, God's concerned about everybody. Not just the good people they live a good life. Not just the rich people have a lot of money. God concerned about everybody. So God doesn't look at color. God doesn't look at your finances. God doesn't look at your background. He said, come on in. The supper is ready. And they did that. They went God the undesirable. You know, our church is filled with undesirable this morning. One day, everything that we done was a filthy rag in the eyes of God. But we found a remedy for that. We had Jesus come into our hearts and say, and he cleansed our life, and he washed us in his precious blood. Made us as white as snow. And then he said, there's still room. Well, he said, go ye in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. My house may be fixed. I thought about that word, compel. And I used to use it in my ministry for ever since I've been here. I say that mean any way you can get it, go get it. You know of a lost person. Tell them about Jesus. Pray for them. Love them. And one day they will thank you for taking time to tell them about Jesus. You hear you never accepted Christ. I want you to come on the very first verse.
we don't pray for you. But I Father, we thank you so much for this service today. Lord, I thank you for each and every one of these that took time out to come and be a part of your service this morning. Lord, I ask you right now to search hard. Lord, if there's a lost person under the sound of our voice this morning that doesn't know you, their Lord and Savior, I pray today will be that day that they step out and come and let us take the word of God and show them how to be saved. I pray that there's a, a saved person here, but they're just not being faithful to you. They're not being what you want them to be. I pray, God, you'll touch their life this morning. God, just renew that joy of their salvation and give them a, an opportunity once again to be what you have them to be. Lord, whatever the need, I pray you'll have your will and your way. And this invitation, in Jesus' name we pray.
our service this morning. And we hope and pray you receive the blessing from being in God's house. And we want you to know you're always welcome. Amen. If you like And I want to thank our regular folks who are here every time the doors are open. Without you, this church would not go. And we want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart this morning. All right, don't forget, trustee, just quickly, it won't take a minute. Uh, if I can see you after the service is dismissed today, uh, we'll get that to get a couple of things that we need to bring up, and uh, we'll look at that. You may just need to pray with it or whatever, but we'll explain that to you in a little bit. All right, let's go ahead We dismiss in order of prayer. Brother John, would you just dismiss in order of prayer? Brother James, just a quick minute, please. Just got a text. Praise the Lord. He's on. Amen. Lord, thank you for the love you show us today. Thank you for the word that James has brought us. Uh, go with us now. Uh, let's all be on stage. Bring us back next Sunday to this place. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. 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 Amen.